Now oh, there. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to conduct a hypothesis test for a difference in two proportions using Minitab. And specifically here, we are going to be entering our data in the form of one column. And I'll get to more about that in a second. But the point is I'm not entering just the, um, the summarized data as in the number of successes versus the number of trials. I'm not in inputting the two sample proportions. I'm having Minitab do that for me. So we'll get into what this um, raw data in one column looks like after we consider our problem. So in the context of example two from chapter 9.3, I have some data from Acadia National Park in 2012, and we're looking at rainy days, rainy days of weekends versus week, um, weekdays. So for weekends, we had 19 weekend days with rain out of 36 for a proportion of 0.52778. For weekdays, I had 29 rainy weekdays out of 85, and for a proportion of 0 0.34118, right? And so we want to um, test the claim that the proportion of rainy days on weekends was significantly greater than that on weekdays, right? And in the true test, or in the true sense of significance, meaning it is unlikely to be due by ch due to chance, right? Okay. So now to talk about this, um, how the data is brought into Minitab. It's not going to be, again, I'm not going to just put in the number of successes and number of trials. I'm actually going to put this in, in standard form. It's not that there's only one column, right? There, there's a few columns, but the, but the key thing here is that every row represents a single case or a single instance. And so if you look at these weekends and weekdays, there's 36 weekends, 30, 85 weekdays. There's actually, if you add those up, there's actually 121 days. So let's take a look at what this data looks like. Right? If I come over here, each row represents a single day, and the columns represent the variables. And so if you scroll down, it actually goes all the way up to 121. right? And so for each day, I have these two categorical variables. Type, whether it's a weekend or a weekday. And then rain, which was 1 if it rained, and 0 if it didn't. So that's what we mean by um, having the data in one column. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's actually one column in your table. It just means that each case has its own row. All right. Okay. So. Let's see how we do this in Minitab. So we start off with this little sequence of events here, regardless of whether we're using um, summarized data or raw data. So let's start with that. We're going to go with stat, basic statistics, two proportions. OK, and so here's where you have some options. The first two are your two raw data options, um, each sample in its own column or both samples in one column, that's what we have. You can also enter the, sam the summarized data, which is basically take this information from the chart and put it in. So if you have the chart, you might as well use this. But if you don't have this chart, if you just have the raw data, you're going to have to use one of these two. So we have both samples in one column, all right? And so let, let me put, this was already in here, so I'll get rid of it, all right? Because it, it will be empty when you get there. OK. so. It asks us, and, and by the way, you have to have your cursor inside these boxes before. If, you, if your cursor is not inside one of these boxes, these options don't appear, right? So the samples, I'm, I'm worried about um, whether it rains or not, right? So that's my sample. My sample is going to be rain. Did it rain or did it not rain? So I select that. That's my samples. Now my sample is broken up into two types, right? That is weekends and weekdays. So my sample IDs. They're going to be the type, right? Meaning weekend or weekdays, right? Okay, so we're good to go. I'm going to go to my options. Um, I can set the confidence level. That's for some confidence interval information that gets um, put out. But it's we're worried about the um, hypothesis test. So in this case, the hypothesized difference, which would come from the null hypothesis, is zero. And our alternate hypothesis is the claim that the difference, the actual difference, is greater than 0, or greater than my hypothesized difference. There is an option for less than, 
um, not equal to or greater than. Um, so that's a left-tailed, two-tailed, right-tailed test. This is a right-tailed test. We're claiming that the difference is significantly greater than zero. We're going to use the pooled estimate of the proportion. You don't have to do this, but if you're using my book, you're going to need to do it because um, that way your answers will match those in the book. And especially if you're doing the online software uh, homework, you're going to want that. Um, you can always use this, um, estimate the proportion separately. In fact, you have to use it if this was something other than zero. If that was like 0.2, you'd actually have to estimate the proportion separately. But it's zero, and all of the examples in the book will, um, will have a hypothesized difference of zero. So we will always be using the pooled estimate of the proportion. I click OK. And I click OK again, and it gives me my output. And it sort of builds this table for me that I already had, um, but I didn't know it if I just had the raw data. So I have a sample proportion of rainy days for weekends is 0.527778. And the proportion for weekdays is 0.341176. So it gives you a little preliminary information. It's testing the difference that the proportion on weekends minus the proportion on weekdays is greater than zero, right? And it spits out the test statistic of 1.92, that's a z-score, using the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. And it gives me, most importantly, a p-value, right? It also spits out this Fisher's exact test. It gives you a p-value for that, which is probably more accurate. Um, but that's a non-parametric test. Um, similar to a chi-squared test. And, and so in the book, we use the normal, the normal approximation. We get a z-score. So we're going to go with this, this test statistic and this p-value. So we have a p-value of 0 0.028. Uh, depending on your significance level, you may reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if we have a significance level of, say, 0 0.05, then uh, that's great. My p-value is less than that. I get to reject my null hypothesis, and I get to conclude um, that the proportion of rainy days on weekends was significantly greater than that on weekdays. Right? So it's, it's, it's pretty easy to do, but the tricky part, I think, in, in this particular example is making sure your data is in the right um, format. And this is sort of the standard format. It, you know, In a lot of statistical software, when you upload data, It'll go under the format of every single row represents a single case, right? So putting it in two columns or putting it in a table like that is not usually um, how you would input the data, and, and it's not the case here. If you do have this data in the form of a table, you definitely want to go with, um, you know, if we do go through this again, you definitely want to go with summarize data because then you just put in this information and it completes the um, the test for you All right so if you're fortunate enough to have it like this uh, great go with that but if you have the raw data in standard form it's a little trickier uh, but you still get the same uh, results so there you go um, conducting a hypothesis test for a difference in two proportions using Minitab uh, pretty easy bye